Guys, focus. I didn't know you did this. You got that. It's called clout. And it is a drug. According to Alabama, I already got 17 kids. Where do you wash the vegetables? Where the yeah. fuck do you wash vegetables? Okay, I know that like, it's a mystery right now. But where the fuck is Kate Middleton? Where is she? <laughs> Are we worried? Are we worried? I mean, she's in the royal family. I'm sure she's fine. I could argue maybe being in the royal family is maybe well, why you're not. <laughs> it depends on which member of the royal family you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't, you know, I, I have so much stuff going on. The internet will come up with a theory now. What? They will. And I'm like, I'm thinking, okay, what is maybe happening? What isn't? But I'm just like, I hope that she is okay. And all these theories are all are really just ridiculous theories. That is my, that is my hope, of course. I'm sure she's going to pop out and then we will move on to the next <laughs> conspiracy theory. <laughs> but you you are right. Like it is it is an interesting family over there. But with that being said, welcome into Too Personal. I'm Taylor Rooks. And I'm Joy Taylor. Thank you guys so much for listening to episode one. We loved all of the interaction. It was such a good time. And we've had an amazing week. But Taylor, what is on your mind today? Okay, so what's on my mind today? I don't even know if it is a take as much as it is just a confusion and a question. Why are people going on these shows? on the streamers to be like judged by their looks for the speed dating, the 20 to one, the pop the balloon, whatever it's called. Like, I literally do not get it. Like why people sign up to go on these shows for people to just make them the butt of the joke. And the thing that's interesting is both men and women do it. I see the speed dating when it's a woman doing the picking and I see it when it's a man doing the picking. And for both of them, for the life of me, I don't get it. I'm struggling to understand like what the point is. Cause I think the point would be comedy. So what, like, why are you then signing up to be made fun of? I don't know. It just literally, it's not clicking to me. And maybe I'm just like old and don't get it, but I don't understand. It's called clout and it is a drug. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But clout at the expense of what though? I guess that's what I'm, because are they not understanding the difference between being a part of a joke and being the joke. Because when you go on these things, like for clout, these specific things, you are signing up to be made fun of. And I'm like, is, is clout really worth it? Is it, has it become that crazy of a thing? Yes. Clout is a very expensive thing and it can cost you your dignity. And it often does. If you don't have another way to acquire clout, you will embarrass yourself to get it. That's why it's a drug. People will go on the internets and do insane things. And we are all laughing at them. We are all embarrassed for them. And they got what they wanted, which is clout. You and I don't have these problems. We have this conversation often, and it is not limited to me and Taylor. So I'm just going to let you behind the curtain. Anyone who has acquired clout through work, through their talents, through their career, through decades of experience. We don't have these problems. <laughs> Clout is a drug. It is a drug. And I'm, Maybe I'm that's not why it's just this. not imputing to me because I just it don't is. get why you would do it. And I'm, I'm genuinely struggling to get the why. That's the why one. would you go into a space you are signing up to be disrespected, made fun of, to be at the expense of someone else's opinion? Also, why do we care? I'm just speaking as, as a woman for the women that do it. Why are we even caring if these men think we look good? Why do we want these men to pick us? What are you doing? I, I do not understand the point. And also no one is going on these shows and actually walking away with like someone they love, someone they want to date with. So you are right. The thing that you're winning is not like the other person. You are winning clout. And I don't get it. It's destructive and it just doesn't make sense to me. And I see them literally all the time. It's these just are not weird. your problems, Taylor. These are not yeah. your problems. <laughs> and that is why you don't understand it because it is for clout. It is it's not crazy. for love. It is not for some sort of weird self-affirmation. It's clout. It's, yeah. it's the start and the end of it. And the reason why you don't understand it, and you're saying we, but it is not we. It is yeah. not we. Maybe I am saying we and it's not. <laughs> it is not we. It is thee. <laughs> it is you. <laughs> it is you. Stop doing that. But yes, I mean, that's what it's about. It's, it's about clout. It's about putting yourself into a space 
more people see you and are talking about you and whether they're talking about you in a positive way or in a negative way is irrelevant to the the end goal, which is clout. I don't get it because there are there are better drugs. Um, but what what's on your mind? There are. There are. <laughs> There certainly are. What's on my mind is also has to do with the internet. I have some, some random guilty pleasures and this one isn't actually that random. I think a lot of people enjoy watching people make elaborate meals on the internet. I will watch food TikToks or Instagram reels. I like watching people put together all the ingredients and like, it, it's like set up so beautifully and they have these amazing knife skills. It's just like a nice way for me to just disconnect from all of the chaos that's on the internet and watch somebody do something that not only is pretty impressive, but also looks like it tastes good. Now, I'm not talking about these weirdos that dump all the barbecue sauce in the cereal in like the bins and stuff or making like the counter nachos. I'm not talking about those people. Okay. I'm talking about people that actually cook, that know what they're doing, and they put together these meals and they give us the recipes. I appreciate it. I think it's so nice. <laughs> I didn't know you did this. <laughs> I love it. I think it's it's so nice. I will always I watch yeah. a cooking video. I will always watch it. Send it to me. I love it. I'm not making any of these things, but I like watching it. But the comments on these people cooking, like the comment section is insane. How could you not put gloves on? They're cooking for themselves. Hey guys. Hey guys, at home, you don't put gloves on to cook for yourself. <laughs> You're, rude, You're yeah. lying. You're lying and it's annoying. No one does that. I don't have one glove in this house. You know why? Because I'm not cooking at a restaurant. These people are <laughs> making food for their families or themselves. Please shut the fuck up about putting, how could you, how could you handle that meat without gloves on? No one does that. They wash their fucking hands. Then it's like, the guy washed the greens in the sink. They're like, who washes vegetables in the sink? Where the fuck do you wash vegetables? In your bathtub? Where do you wash the vegetables? Where the yeah. fuck do you wash vegetables? <laughs> you know what? And I Taylor, hear- and he, he went so far as to show him, show the sink being cleaned. Like he <laughs> showed himself cleaning the sink before he washed the greens. Who makes greens in your house? Where does your where does your mother, your grandmother, where do you wash your greens? In the sink. You, you wash everyone does. The sink. Literally you wash everyone does it in the sink. Yeah, I don't get I actually more than anything, I don't know what the other option would be. Like if not the sink, what's the other watering hole? <laughs> what else is it? I That's my, po- I my just point is say, I don't comment on any of these things at all because I don't cook at all. I wouldn't even know. If what you were supposed to wear, where you're supposed to put it. I can follow a recipe. I'll get it done. I do that every now and then, but I am not a cook. I don't do it. I make amazing reservations. And I bet you most of the people that are in the comment section, it's probably the same thing. It's genuinely. I even <laughs> like, can what do confirm. you mean? Can <laughs> confirm. Taylor makes a great reservation. I mean, it's probably my best dish. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> I am dead. That is true, though. Like, everybody can't make good reservations. Yeah. No, I know. No, no. I, I consider this to be a skill. I, it, I it, is. Very it is. They don't have the plug. They don't know what time everybody wants to eat. They don't get the good table. You know, they don't but know you, the spot. You know, you said something that is incredibly important about the irritation you're getting when you watch these cooking videos. It's that it's coming from the comment section. And that is what they do there is to nitpick the cooking. If it isn't how they're washing it, it's that they did or didn't put enough seasoning in it. Like it's always going to be something. Why was it cut this way? The presentation is bad. What you need to do is make sure you add. But that's like that's what they are living for in these videos. Like it's and honestly, shout out to the creators of the videos that you're watching, because even that is engagement. So anytime someone wants to leave a stupid comment, it's engagement. Thank you. <laughs> it is. And, and we appreciate the engagement. And we're not going to we're not going to give you the plug about how to stop doing that because we, we like the engagement. <laughs> but I just want to encourage the people that make these videos. I'm watching. I appreciate you. I would like for you to cook for me. I think that it looks yummy. And I'm sorry that these weirdos are in the comments talking about shit they don't know anything about. Or that just doesn't matter, or they're just making shit up like they wear 
gloves to cook food for their family because they're insane. So I just want to, I want to, I want to give you a word of encouragement that someone out there is just pleasantly watching and green flag enjoying your content. Hey, don't leave, nobody love you. Joy love you. Joy love you. Joy love love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep oh, doing it. it. All right. Well, now it's time to get to the main topic of the day, which I am ready for. And fired up about. So this has been a topic that has been spoken about this week pretty heavily. So Halle Bailey gave a speech at the Essence Black Women in Hollywood Awards. Shout out to Essence, by the way. And she talked about hiding her pregnancy. And she said, with the state of the world and the place that it is in with men trying to force their will on our bodies, no one on social media and for damn sure no one on this planet was going to tell me what to do with my body or what to share with the world. People then accuse her of lying and gaslighting them about being pregnant. Meghan Markle was speaking on stage at an event at South by Southwest in Austin. She said, I keep my distance from social media right now for my own well-being. The bulk of the bullying and, and abuse I was experiencing in social media and online was when I was pregnant with Archie and Lily and with a newborn. And the way that she's been treated online has been well documented. And then Vanessa Hudgens was at the Oscars red carpet on Sunday and she debuted her belly bump. And the comments were, who is her baby daddy? <laughs> Guys, this woman is literally <laughs> married. Focus. This woman is literally married to a public figure, publicly married. And then she wore a gorgeous sheer fit to the Vanity Fair par party, which everyone was in, in sheer. I was appreciating it, giving body. And everyone had something to say about that as well. So, Taylor, why is it so problematic that people feel the right to be involved in someone else's pregnancy journey? You know, it's interesting because when you brought this up, I really started thinking about it. And it is so much deeper than just people wanting to be involved in it. This thought and this mindset is actually much more political than I think people even understand when they are making these tweets and making these comments because ownership of women's bodies actually goes far beyond things like reproductive rights. It's also just anytime you feel like you have a say generally, how many kids I have, when I have them, even what I look like after I have them, how involved you were or were not in the process. And like we're seeing it under a microscope when it comes to celebrities and public figures, but there's actually just a major general infatuation with pregnancy. And it isn't even the pregnancy, it's actually about control. It's that if we think someone is pregnant, that they need to let us in. And it's like, for what? Like a person being pregnant should be about happiness and, and joy and the love and this beautiful life that is going to come into the world. But I think that when outsiders get a hold of it, they actually use it as a way to judge, to view, to fetishize, to invade. And people don't realize that that too is objectification. You are hyper aware and hyper concerned with another woman's body. That is objectification. And I would argue that this being even more about celebrity, more than it about being about being pregnant or even about babies, it is about women's bodies as a whole. And that is what's problematic. The more that you engage in this sort of um, interaction that is based on pushing a woman to tell you something about herself and her body, what you are actually engaging in is the objectification of women. You want to be a mom. I know this about you as your friend, that it's something Absolutely. that's very important to you. And you're a very private person with your personal life. Have you thought at all about if you, how you want to handle when you get pregnant? Oh, 100%. I mean, I would handle it the same way I try to handle everything that is personal in my life. And that's on my time and in my space. I don't think that my body nor my life serves as a countdown to other people. I don't think I owe other individuals updates. Like I don't, something is not or is happening, whether it's based or I put like decide to post it. Like me not posting something does not mean that that thing does not exist. And that is this thing that I think is getting muddied up with celebrities or public figures specifically is people have become so used to sharing 
um, oversharing, updates, you know, countdowns, then when they don't see it, they think that something is wrong. And I will say this, when you make the decision to allow people into your life in that way, that's what muddies it up. So I just had to make a decision that I was not ever going to let people into my life in that way so that they don't feel entitled to it. But even that has been a mistake because so people still feel very entitled to what I am or are not doing. Like it is, it really is an issue, but I know that when I'm pregnant, I am going to just, if you see me post one day and it's that I'm pregnant, it won't be a pregnancy post. It'll be a post of me with a belly. <laughs> like that won't be the point of why I'm doing it. I will share that news with the people that I love and that love me and that are going to take part in my life and the baby's life. And that's really, in my opinion, the only people that should have an opinion. Yeah. But here we are. And I see this conversation constantly. And personally, I feel leave pregnant women alone. Leave them alone. Our society has this sick delusional, depraved obsession with pregnancy. It is a fetish. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a sexual fetish. Although the point that you made about objectification does apply here because you are talking about a woman's body, but it is a layer deeper than just their body and the control that we feel that we have over women's bodies. Because it starts with the demand that all women have children both yep. philosophically and physically through the law to the process in which you become pregnant because the government is now involved in your embryos to who you choose to have a child with if it is a choice because of course the government has been involved in that then you <laughs> have to be put through when you announce that you're pregnant how you announce it you have to be picked apart through every choice that you make during pregnancy you work out wrong. You don't work out wrong. What you eat, how you dress, if you work, if you don't work, if you put makeup on, if you get dressed up, who you getting dressed up for? What are your pregnancy pictures look like? Are they too sexy? Are they not sexy enough? How big is your belly? And when it is big, can people touch the belly? Where you have mm -hmm. the baby? Is it at home? Is it at a hospital? Do you breastfeed? People talk about if you breastfeed, if you don't breastfeed, you're depriving your child of nutrients. Even if you physically cannot do it, you are still wrong. God forbid you feed this child in public while you're breastfeeding. When do you lose the weight? Is it, are you losing it too fast? Are you too worried about how you look? If you don't lose it in a certain amount of time, well, she's, she certainly <laughs> didn't bounce back. Yeah. Shut the fuck up about pregnant women. Our society has a fetish with pregnancy and it has to stop. Yeah. No, I completely agree 100% with what you're saying. I think what is particularly important in that is really how there are choices that are criticized at every single step of the way. And so then it starts to feel like if you're pregnant, when you're in these situations, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. The public has made it seem like there is no winning when it comes to pregnancy, even though the winning is the fact that you are having a child. Like that is the win, but it has become about so many other things along the way. But when you ask these questions, and when you think about people that are so concerned about it, not to make it a picking side situation, but do you? tend to hear and feel this scrutiny more from women or more from men? Because I think that's also an important point in this too, where it's coming from. I definitely think it is both, but I do think it comes more from women towards other women. And that is really why I feel so strongly about it, because we are supposed to protect each other. And instead of doing that, it is these opinions that are veiled in, mm -hmm. in positive uh, feedback. Oh, well, you should do this. Oh, well, you want the child to do this. Oh, well, you should feed them this. Oh, don't do that because that will harm the baby. You are not a fucking doctor. 
<laughs> and beyond you not being a doctor, even if you are a doctor, you are not this woman's doctor. And I see it constantly, not just with public figures, but also with people in my life. A very dear friend to me, one of my best friends, just had a baby. She is a very tiny woman. She is very fit. She eats well. She works out a lot. She is very healthy. She's health conscious, not because she wants to show off, because that's literally who she is. She likes eating vegetables. Okay, we, we, we have a joke. <laughs> she's going to order the salad. Can't relate, but love that for her. Love yes. <laughs> and she loves, she loves it. Yeah. She, she gets pregnant. She's, she's gorgeous. She's, a, she's so happy to become a mother. And everyone has an opinion about her body. Where is her belly bump? Why is it not big enough? Is she eating enough? Uh, why, why is she still working out? And I've seen this not just with her, but with other friends of mine as well. None of this is useful. None of this is helpful. And in fact, it's very hurtful and it is doing the opposite of what you quote unquote intend to do. Like it's so much pressure to be perfect all the fucking time. If you're a woman, you, you never make the right choice. Your hair is up. It's ugly. It's down. It's ugly. It's makeup. It's too much. It's no makeup. You, you're, you look tired. They're, they're just, there's endless choices and you're never making the right one. It's why the America Ferreira, uh, uh, monologue in Barbie is so impactful because she's just outlining all of the insane expectations that women have. And I think when it comes to pregnancy, I feel so strongly about it because my sister has five children. I'm, I'm a generational auntie. I am a great aunt, 13 nieces and nephews. I've always had babies around me. I'm always around pregnant women. I have friends that have children and I have a massive family and I just constantly see it. I see it with people who are public figures. I see it with people in my personal life. And I just want to say, if you are this person, you are being a fucking weirdo. You are a fetish obsessed weirdo. And I want you to feel weird. I want you to think about what the things that you're saying are and feel like a weirdo, like a person that is um, just... No, it's, it is weird. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And even the more that I, I hear you talk about this and we have this discussion, it just continues to really affirm to me how political this stuff is. Like, I think that a large thing missing when we discuss women's bodies and women's rights um, to pregnancy or whatever it is generally is the right to privacy. Some of these situations and conversations actually have to shift to how can we protect privacy, celeb or not? And why are people so determined to then disrupt that privacy? It is so fucking crazy and weird to want to out that a person is pregnant, to want to be the owner of that news, to want to take photos of someone's baby bump who is not wanting to outwardly discuss it. Why are you trying to dictate and own what that experience is? Privacy has to be important. It has to be a centerpiece of this because how can we continue to plead for the country to give us bodily autonomy? while we do not give it to one another. And I know that I talk about common thought a lot, but it's because it's important. It's because the little decisions that we make every day actually lend themselves to the much bigger decisions. Feeling as though you are involved in the announcement of this pregnancy means that you think you're involved in the pregnancy at all. And I thought we don't want people to be involved in our pregnancies. And pregnancy also, to be clear, is a huge part of it, definitely, but it's also only one part. We are watching women's bodies from a very, very young age. When will she hit puberty? Oh, she's got breasts. Her hips are coming in. Girl, you're filling out a little bit. When are you thinking about having kids? Are you pregnant? Oh, she is pregnant. She had the baby. Like at every stage of my life, I know that my body has been scrutinized and put under a major microscope. And this pregnancy part of it is really just the one that feels the most glaring. But our bodies are seemingly always under attack in so many ways. Like I have been asked multiple times, both in person and online, just why don't you have kids? When do you want to have kids? That should not be a question that you ever ask 
anybody ever. That is my experience, my privacy. And you are then, without even realizing it, reducing my existence to whether or not I am a mother because you feel as though my job is to be in service to other people as a woman. It, it's not me and it's not, it's not the case. As you said, I want children. I want lots of children. I have already taken the steps to be able to do that. According to Alabama, I already got 17 kids. So like, let's like, like people don't even understand. Like, even when you are talking about these people in these ways, above all else, you really don't know anything. So you are contributing negatively politically, personally, socially, culturally. So you should feel weird. You should feel like a creep that you are so heavily interjecting your thoughts and your criticisms into my being. I, I don't ever want to be that kind of person. I'm very thankful that I never have been that kind of person too. <laughs> well, you know, listening to, to you talk about it, I'm thinking of the times where I have been guilty of this. Like even obviously, you know, we all have opinions about what people look like, even if we're trying to be our best, but even within my my own personal circle, just you know, saying, knowing someone was trying and asking them something then, and then reacting to my question and realizing, wow, I shouldn't have asked that question. I don't know what's going on with their yeah. pregnancy journey. And I, I, I felt bad about it. I was like, you know what, that that's their right to react that way. Because even though this is someone that is very close to me and it is not a random person on the internet, they're going through their process and I should just wait till they share what they feel comfortable with. But to your point, even asking someone when they're going to have kids, you don't know if someone is struggling to have children and you can be asking that question in a triggering moment while they are struggling to get pregnant. And that is invasive. And it's why I just keep saying, shut the fuck up about pregnant women. Women deserve the privacy that they want for that journey. And if you sit here and talk about what you're owed, Nobody owes you anything. I don't know who told this lie to everyone, but nobody. I mean, I rebuke it. I rebuke it. Rid yourself of these chains. Nobody owes you anything. No yeah. one. I can't stress it enough. No one owes you anything. And the way that we treat people like you have to tell us and you lied to us and you, you shouldn't share this if you don't want to be criticized. That's why people don't share anything with you dummy because they don't want to be criticized with your irrelevant inputs on their very personal experience. And we do it in our personal lives and we do it publicly. And it is, it is, a. there are many reasons why I don't want children, but one of the reasons is this experience that we diminish pregnant women to nothing more than a, an oven for this Life that we then will not give a fuck about. We will not worry about how they are educated. We will not worry about the support that they have in their home. We do not worry about if they are murdered at school with guns. It is the, it is the epitome of hypocrisy in our society that we are this obsessed with pregnancy, not the woman, not her well-being, because, I mean, God forbid you ask her how she is doing. Not the yeah. baby, not her husband, not her other children, how she is doing. God forbid you ask that. But then once the baby's born, we don't want nothing to do with it. This is your problem. Feed them, clothe them, raise them. And then hopefully they come home from school because we are going to flood the streets with as many guns as we can possibly farm to you. It is such a joke. And it is insane to me that we live like this and that we justify it with this weird, just, well we can see that you're pregnant and well, I had a kid and this is what I did, or this is what my mother did, or this is what my doctor said to do. Fuck off. It, it's crazy. And there's also, it's important to say too, like there's a lot of, um, there's race tied up into this. There is an idea of morality that is tied up into this. It's an idea of reaching the uh, pinnacle of womanhood that is tied up into this. And you talk about the, health and the joy not being the centerpiece, Black women die in childbirth at a 243% higher rate than Talk white women. Why is that 
not the conversation that we are having when we see Black women that are pregnant? How can we protect Black women in childbirth? How can we protect their mental? How can we make sure they have all of the resources at their disposal post-pregnancy? If we want to have pregnancy be a conversation, (laughs) let's talk about the things about pregnancy and child rearing that need to be fixed. Because whether I told you or not is not a life issue. It is not a world or societal issue. That is a personal, very weird void that you think you have to fill with my life. But there are productive conversations that we could be having that are honestly more than just being productive. They're important. There are conversations that are about life or death that nobody is broaching because they are obsessed with saying that someone has a baby bump. And that is incredibly, incredibly dehumanizing. And it's just, it's impossible to have this conversation without talking about the ways that race does play a role. The way that we sometimes talk about Black pregnant women as opposed to white pregnant women. The way we sometimes talk about married pregnant women in comparison to unmarried pregnant women. The way we sometimes talk about pregnant women who have lots of money versus those that do not. All of these things play a role in how we are having these conversations and how damaging these conversations can be. You need the context and you need the nuance and understand that none of these words are just words. They feed into a bigger idea of what we think about women generally. And it's really bad. There are websites that are dedicated to just tracking celebrity pregnancy. That's literally what they are dedicated to. That is weird. It's strange. And engaging in that is strange. (laughs) And it truly is like a problem in ways. Admittedly, I didn't fully really think about until you started talking to me about this conversation. I'm like, this is, this is really bad. And it has only gotten worse. Like I remember, you know, like when everyone was putting up like Demi Moore's cover when she was pregnant. And then I remember from that how it continued to be more of this visible kind of experience that we are all engaging in and how people have used imagery to sometimes make people feel bad about being pregnant women. It's it's bad. And as somebody who, as you said, wants to be a mom, these are really things that I think about when really, if I'm thinking about getting pregnant, the only thing that I should be thinking about is being pregnant. <laughs> Now I got to think about everything else. And you, we are robbing women of one of the best experiences of their lives if they so choose, if that is a one of theirs. We are robbing them of that. And it's really, it's really sad and really damaging. Yeah, I think it is. I'm embarrassed for us because I feel so strongly about this. Like I said, I've had so many personal experiences around me and seen the suffering that just little comments make for these women who have enough stress in their body already trying to bring a healthy baby into the world and the expectations that if the baby isn't healthy, that it's somehow their fault. And the pressure of being a mother and being present immediately and not having any time to yourself. And you talk about the politics of all of it. We haven't even mentioned, and I'm sorry, ladies, that we haven't even gotten this far yet, We don't even want to give fucking maternity leave. (laughs) So you want us to get pregnant by any means necessary, even if it is against our will, get pregnant, share the pregnancy with you, share every step of the journey and participate in any criticism that you provide. You want us to have multiple children because as soon as the child's out, we start start talking about when you're going to have another one. We want you to bounce back immediately, share who your baby's father is, share everything about this very private and elaborate experience. And we don't even want to give you like a couple weeks off for your body who just produced another human to recover from. And so what my main takeaway from all of this is, outside of shut the fuck up, please, (laughs) is... What you said, 
if we're going to sit here and pump it up, this spiritual experience, this gift of life from God, your purpose on this planet as a woman, if you don't have a baby and really multiple children, you've wasted God's, God's vessel to continue humankind on. You really have no value. People are going to tell us that we shouldn't be talking about this because we don't have kids. They That's for what sure they're going to say. Yeah. That's what they're going to sure. say. We're going we're gonna to build pregnancy up to being the most important experience that a woman can have. Because again, if you have a surrogate, people have shit to say about that. If you adopt children, you have shit to say about that. So it's not really about motherhood. It's not really about raising children properly. It's not really about not traumatizing them or providing for them or giving them a safe space to grow into empathetic people. It's just the pregnancy. It is just pregnancy that everyone wants and demands from everyone. That's why it's political. That's why it's about Roe versus Wade. It's why it's about the Alabama and the embryos. It's, it's, it's all of that. It's just the pregnancy. If we're going to build yep. this, this experience up as the only reason why women exist on this planet, if that's what you guys want to do, because that's what you're pitching to me. This is the pitch, okay? <laughs> this is the pitch. I'm yeah. with it. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. If that's the case, mm -hmm. everything else, everything else that surrounds pregnancy, the support that women have, maternity leave, the mortality rate with black women, the, the resources that you have while pregnant for mental health, for you, for you, the person who's growing the child, the, 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 the time spent in the hospital, the hospital bills for that matter, the, the help that you have when you bring a child home, all of that has to be the priority in legislation. All of that has to be the priority in society because otherwise all you're fucking saying is you're a hypocrite and mm -hmm. you don't care. You don't care that you're a hypocrite. And that's the, that's the worst kind of hypocrite because we are all hypocrites at some point. But when you know, know. <laughs> yeah, we know. And yeah, now you know, you know. I just told you, I just told you, you are a fucking hypocrite. You say you care about, about pregnancy. You care about babies. You care about society continuing on. You care about God said you're here to make babies cool. Everything in your fucking life should be about supporting women during this process, lifting them up, providing no opinion, just support, no opinion, just support. Mm -hmm. And making sure that you fight for every bit of legislation that supports women during this process. Otherwise, go sit in the fucking corner, or better yet, better yet, go outside and touch grass. Go outside <laughs> and touch grass. You know, I have to say this. You mentioned it earlier. You said there will be people that say we cannot have this conversation because we don't have kids or because we are not mothers. And I would say that having that thought and saying that is actually proving our point. You are proving our point if you are determining the validity or status of our opinion based on our proximity to having children. That is our point. You are seeing us as this thing that has decided to not do this thing yet or in general that you want us to do and saying, because we have not, elected into this activity, we cannot have a thought on it. When really women have a thought on this because we have experienced it our entire lives. And also if it is a man commenting and saying that, how dare you? I have 31 years of experience as a woman to be able to tell you what it means to be objectified and talked about as if your body is just a vessel for another human being, despite the fact that I really would love that time to come for my body to be that vessel. But don't, don't put that on us. We make decisions. And honestly, we have to bring back personal decisions. That's another important part too, with life generally and with pregnancy. These are personal decisions. So people are going to leave the comment and that's totally fine, but I just want you all to really understand that you're not doing what you think you're doing. It's not the flex you think it is. The only thing you're doing is saying, damn, what Joy and Taylor talking about, they might be on to something <laughs> because I'm saying they can't even talk about this because I have not deemed them worthy to talk about it. And that is crazy. 
and we know it's coming, but it is crazy. It is crazy to say you do not have children. Shut up. It's crazy. I'm a woman. I understand it. I, we have experienced this for our entire lives. Like, it's just nuts. So that would probably be my takeaway, number one. And then my second takeaway, just to piggyback off of what else you said, is that human beings have to be able to differentiate loving the idea of something and actually loving it. And unfortunately, what everyone is doing right now is just loving the idea of these things. They love the idea of a pregnant woman. They love the idea of a cute little baby. They love the idea of this celebrity that they enjoy watching becoming a mother. But do you actually care about the baby? Do you care about the life that baby is going to live? Do you care about the post you know, the post-pregnancy life that that celebrity is now living, that celebrity's mental health. The idea is not the same thing as the reality. But the reason that that's scary is the ideas that we are having are shaping our reality, even though they are not connected in the ways that they should be. So I would just caution everybody and really plead for everyone to make the idea and the reality the same thing. Because if the reality was closer to the idea, we would all be a lot happier and we would all be a lot better off. And women would feel much more protected and loved and we'd feel safe. And maybe women wouldn't feel like they have to put all these safeguards around the experience. The safeguards exist because they have to exist. Yep. That is why people want to be private. You are why. People want to be private, but then you turn around and say, why didn't you tell me? Yes. Why are you asking me? <laughs> it's, it's wild. So I just, I really just want people to understand that the choices that you make, the words you decide to say, these ideas that you have, although they seem frivolous to you, have real genuine impact on other women on a day Today basis on a state level, on a federal level, it's all important. And everyone has to get on board with just how important these things are. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. And that is a perfect way to end the conversation. But I remembered also postpartum <laughs> and then you want to see what the baby looks like. What if this person doesn't want to put their baby's face on the internet yet because you guys are psychotic weirdos. So they put like a cover over the baby's face and then it's like, well, why can't we see the baby? This is not your child. Yeah, it's because it's not your baby. It's, it's not your baby. baby. <laughs> they don't yeah. owe you anything. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a much cleaner cut, but the way that Taylor ended that I, 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 want, I, was, I just wanted to make sure that we got as, as much it's as- It's it didn't need to be in. And I was, by the way, I was like, why am I having a brain fart? I could not think of the word postpartum. I was like- Post pregnancy. When you, were it, when you were saying it, I was like, "Yeah, because we gotta get the, we gotta get the postpartum ladies in here." Too, yeah, we gotta get the real thing. It is know? a very I'm, real I'm, thing, and I want to apologize to all on on behalf of everyone. I want to apologize to the women who are not pregnant, who are not ready to have babies yet, to the women who are in the process, to the women who are struggling, to the women who are pregnant and don't feel supported or protected or safe to the women who are going through struggles with pregnancy, to the women who've just given birth, to the moms. I, I'm, I hate it for us that women are so unprotected in our society on, the, on every level from political to uh, the, it, within the church, they're unprotected, within families are unprotected. It breaks my heart because it is such a, it is supposed to be such an incredible experience and we have turned it into really what feels for me something that is absolutely terrifying to go through. And I, I've seen it. I have it in such close proximity to me constantly mm -hmm. and it is really heartbreaking. It really makes me sad. I, I'm not a crier, but I can feel it because I've just seen it so much and so often and I, it really makes me enraged when people do it because it is so selfish. It is about you. It is not about her. It is not about this woman. It is about you getting your opinion off. It is about you feeling entitled to someone else's personal private and very 
like I said, elaborate, but I really want to say difficult experience. Your body's going through a lot. Your emotions are going through a lot. God forbid you don't have the support at home. It is just crazy how we treat pregnant women. And I am so fucking tired of it. And I think that people think that they are doing a good thing. I think overall, the people who are nasty and disgusting, you know who you are. So I I don't even really think I'm talking to them because they're useless to society (laughs) anyway. I'm talking about the people who think they're doing a good thing, who think they're celebrating this person, who think they're giving positive feedback. You're not. You're not. Support and protect these women in every facet, even if they aren't pregnant, if they have a surrogate, they're dealing with their own stresses. They're, they're not the pregnant person, but they are about to become a mom. And you can't keep moving the needle for what's important in society. Women, you only have value if you're a mom. However you become a mom. Oh, oh you, you, you went through um, IVF. Well, that's not, that's not the way that God intended. Fuck off. Fuck off. I'm just saying it on behalf of the women who can't say it. You are despicable people and you need to do better. You need to care about what you say you care about. How did you say it, Taylor? You say things so much better than me. What did you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you said no, we need to make not the at thing all. thing. I mean, you, said, you said it better. It was more eloquent. <laughs> we need to make honestly, the thing. Honestly, I just be talking. I don't know what I said, honestly. The idea, <laughs> the idea of something. So the idea and reality need to become the same thing because Never. the ideas that we have are better than the reality. And that's the thing. It's like the math ain't math in. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't really care. You don't. You don't really care. You don't care. But you know what? You know who cares? Me and Joy. Me and Joy care. We see you women, as she said, women who have been pregnant, who are trying to get pregnant, who can't get pregnant, who are struggling. Like, we see you. We love you. If nobody has just said, like, you are doing all the right things simply because you are existing, we are here to say it. So we love you. And we um we love people who send in voicemails. We love our little like, voice I feel like notes. Blues, 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 blues. Like what, what what is it when they bring the uh, the mail? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I I love this. Like we do need a, like a voice note dance. I don't know what this was. This was the usher. <laughs> All right, let's get to our voice notes voice of the day. Mail. Hi, Joy and Taylor. Um, First, I just wanted to thank you both for creating this space and this platform, especially as a young Black woman working in the entertainment industry. Um, And that also kind of ties into my question. I wanted to get your takes on empathy in professional settings. Um, I'm someone who cares a lot about the world, other people, my work. Um, But I feel like sometimes I teeter like a weird line of being like super passionate and good at what I do and wanting to care, but also not wanting to be taken advantage of as of course so many other black women are in different industries and different workplaces. Um, So I guess my question is, how do you two advise like going about developing professional boundaries um, while still maintaining your own identity and your own individuality, Mm -hmm. especially as black women in the workplace? That That is a a great question. question. Yeah, that is an amazing question. Oh my gosh. Very good question. So good. I really need to think about what my answer is, Kayla, <laughs> but it's a very good one. <laughs> I think, God, yeah. I think, I think there's, there's two. Well, yeah, I always, I always put a number on things as Taylor knows, and then it ends up being like five or six, seven things. <laughs> so I won't even number it. I'll just give my, my points. I would say it's important to establish that you are in the room for a reason. So we have a lot going on with DEI right now and people trying to minimize our existence as DEI hires. We're only here because somebody needed some diversity. It's not because we're excellent at what we do and have been working and establishing our careers for a very long time and have probably more elaborate resumes than our peers because we've had to. So imposter syndrome is something that, you know, I think everyone, no matter where you're from, with the exception of one group, feels at some point in their experience. And I I encourage you to just go back and look at your resume. Think about all the things that you've done. When somebody asks me what I've done, I'm like, honey, what haven't I done? (laughs) Okay, what, what job haven't I held? 
So I think it's important to remember that you're there for a reason and it's not because somebody needed you for diversity in the room. And also don't feel shy about reminding people that you are working right now. Send people your rates right away. Make sure that you introduce the conversation about what we're going to be paid here. You don't need to work for free. There shouldn't be an assumption that you are providing these services for free because you need, a, you know, you need exposure or something like that. And don't feel like you need to minimize who you are. One thing that Taylor and I always say when people ask us for advice and particularly black women is to show up as you are and do not apologize for that. What makes you unique is you and everything that goes into being you. And being a black woman is a big part of what you are. You shouldn't apologize for that in any way. That's really great advice. I agree with, with all of that. Um, I think what I would probably add is that, first off, empathy is a very powerful and proven tool of leaders and high performers. Their ability to understand others and see others and relate to others. It is very powerful. It's how we connect. Um, and I think you're kind of wondering how you can teeter this line of how can I be this caring person that I am while also making it clear that this is a workplace and I have to have boundaries to be able to thrive in this setting. And I think that my most important advice that I would give to that, honestly, is that you can't give a job more than it gives you. Like you don't give these parts of yourself if they are unreciprocated. And you certainly don't let people use their awareness of your empathy as a tool to take advantage of you. But then the challenge that I would give you is reframing how you are viewing empathy. I I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but your empathy is actually not a weakness that you have at work. It is actually a power that you have at work. It is something that makes you very good. It is possible to be that empathetic colleague while also staying true to yourself. Because in my experience, the key to that is seeing things for what they are. You can be your full self at work if you're also cognizant of the fact that you are indeed at work. It requires a very different level of awareness, but you aren't and should never silence the parts of you that make you you, that make you a Black woman, that, that make you this person that is good at your job. Because I'm going to tell you the real secret if no one's told you this, you are all of those things in so many ways because you are a Black woman. That is the power that you hold, the experiences that you have that have shaped you, that have allowed you to excel in the space that you're in. The trick that what they try to trick you to do, at least, is to make those things smaller to be able to fit into what you're doing at work. But you actually have to make them bigger. And honestly, the bigger that you make them, the more clear your boundaries are because they know who the fuck you are. So I think what I, what I really just say is just reframe the way that you are thinking about these parts of yourself and how they show up at work too. And yeah. also too, like, and truly enjoy your job. Like when I said the whole thing about, I don't give a job more than it gives me, it's because I feel at least, you know, especially what I'm doing right now, I feel very lucky and blessed to be at jobs where I feel cared for and seen and respected. And that feeling allows me to give them that feeling, but it only comes after. So it's, it's just important to put things where they're, they belong and like put people and, and corporations where they belong to. Um, and I would say Kayla, just to, to add on to that, to what Taylor just said, work is not your personal life. So while you can absolutely enjoy your career, you can enjoy your coworkers, you can enjoy everything that it is you do. The reason we have professional jargon per my last email, all of those things is because your career is different than your personal life. And you mentioned boundaries, Kayla. Boundaries is my thing. I'm the boundary girl. Okay. And boundaries will make you so happy. I am so pro boundaries because you get to set the standards for your life. And if somebody doesn't like your boundaries, they are answering the question you have, which is, should they be around? The answer is no, because no, no, one, <laughs> no one should have a problem with your boundaries because they're for you. 
And Mm -hmm. as long as those boundaries don't impose on someone else, then it's a positive thing. So you're on the right track. And I agree with everything Taylor just said. And thank you for sending in your voice note, Kayla. We love you. Yes. Thank you for sending the voice note. I also too want to say this because I I don't think we touched on it real quick. I also understand that in the entertainment industry, because Joy and I are in it too, it, those lines blur real quick. Yeah. They do like that, that line of like what's work and what's personal. It blurs. You work long hours, you travel, you're like, you're around each other and these environments a lot of times that don't feel corporate-y. Yeah. So like, I get how this is a challenge for you. And I just, I want to make sure I don't gloss over the fact that I, I understand that the business that you're in also makes this difficult too. But thank you so much for sending in that voice note. It was a, like such a good question. It's clear on girl Kayla work in media. Okay. <laughs> yes. Very well put together. Thank yes. you so much, Kayla. That was a great question. <laughs> if you want to participate in the podcast and be a part of the voice note segment, make sure you send your voice notes in to 2TWO, 2PersonalPodcast at gmail.com. We had a great one last week with George. It kind of almost made us cry. This was another great one. So you guys are sending in great voice notes. We love this. But if you want to participate, it's 2PersonalPodcast at gmail.com. Okay, before I hang up, I do want to say I really enjoyed the Oscars. I feel like it is the gown. It's a Super Bowl of gowns. <laughs> <laughs> gowns, beautiful gowns. Yeah, beautiful gowns, beautiful pictures. <laughs> um, but no, I, I really enjoy the red carpet and I, I, lo- I loved the show. I think that one of my gripes with, with award shows is it's a it's a celebration of talents and accomplishments, and I don't think we need to roast anyone. I think the jokes can be all cheeky and fun, and we don't need to appease the alpha bros who are like Hollywood is <laughs> Hollywood is uh, full of themselves. Yes, baby, that is the point, baby. We are celebrating <laughs> our stars, baby. That is the point. They are wearing gowns. They are in Hollywood. These are uh, the biggest stars in the world. Nobody wants to be roasted. Nobody cares about your opinion about their hair. Like, this is what this is for. We are celebrating greatness. It does not need to be diminished in any way by people being made fun of. I thought the jokes were very light for the most part. Nothing is ever perfect, of course. There are a couple ones that we could have done without. But in general, let's just please normalize it being a fun night of celebration. I'm not here (laughs) for for people being roasted i think it's so weird it is it's it's for like that experience is for people that don't watch award shows it is an award show it is giving awards for accomplishments like what did you think you were watching right it's It's meant to be grand and over the top over the top it is the oscars it's the (laughs) celebration of the biggest films in the world just it should all be light and fun and happy um yeah so that's that's what i had to say before we hang up no, I totally agree. For me, before I hang up, and I have multiple, this is a, this is a habit I'm forming that I am going to try and get out of. <laughs> but before I hang up, sticking with the Oscars, I have to give a major, major, major shout out to one of my dear friends, Core Jefferson, who won yes. an Oscar adapted I love to speak for American too. Fiction. Amazing. He talks so much all the time about the fact that Hollywood has to be able to take more of what they see as quote unquote risks because there are more stories. There are more types of stories, more experiences to be told. And the more that we get caught up in having the same type of movie told by the same type of person, we are losing out on something so much more beautiful. People didn't want Cord's movie. People didn't want it. It is one of the best movies that I have ever seen. And the people that took a chance on that are reaping the benefits because they understood the power in him as a black man. They understood the power in storytelling and they understood the power of both new and the same perspective. So shout out to Cord um, for that because it was a beautiful moment. So that's my first one. Second one, I know this episode is going to come out on my best friend's birthday. So major shout out to Mr. Jack. Anyone who knows Jack and I knows he is just my twin. We are attached at the hip. He is my best friend. Um, I'm so inspired by you. I'm thankful for your friendship and your presence in my life. Next week, I'll try to get into to one. <laughs> It's cool, girl. It's cool. We uh, we are we are giving our thoughts on this show. Yes, shout out to Jack. Happy birthday, Jack. 
wonderful person, wonderful artist, um, creative, all the things, but of course, most of all, an amazing friend. And everyone who won at the Oscars as well, all the artists and yeah. actors um, was, you know, it's just, we're just celebrating, okay? We're celebrating people. We're celebrating pregnant women, not pregnant <laughs> women. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, Everyone. <laughs> Everyone, you come here to be celebrated. We will do it for you. <laughs> I celebrate you. Oh, I love you, Joy. This was you fun. Too, baby. Love you. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and get your daily dose of Too Personal on every Wednesday. Like and subscribe.